In the depths of the Arctic winter, the signs of climate change are sadly all too plain to see and at the other end too of the Earth, in the Antarctic, in the summer. The Antarctic sea ice is at its lowest recorded level for this time of year, 691,000 square miles. That's 52,500 square miles less than the previous recorded low just last year. That is roughly the size of Greece. Now, the less ice there is, the quicker the climate heats up. And few places are heating up quicker than Svalbard, off the coast of Norway, seven times faster than the rest of the world. On Svalbard, these are the coldest weeks of the year. Still technically polar winter, the sun is not yet above the horizon. It's minus 12, double that with the wind chill. And here, 650 miles from the North Pole, on land, the notion of a heat wave feels far removed from reality. But it's too warm. The ice fjord, as it's called, is free of ice again. And science is only just starting to understand why. Even with decades of data, learning about the impact of warmer Atlantic waters on sea ice is still in its infancy. It's called the Atlantification of the Arctic, warmer, saltier water from the south pushing its way north. This is what is melting the sea ice much more rapidly than the increasing air temperatures do. It was first studied in 2006 when scientists observed a lack of sea ice, even though winter temperatures ought to have created more. Oceanography student Francesca Ruff hopes her work here will reveal more about this little known process. And it's a really complex system that is it's happening right now. So there's no old data that you can look at. It's all new science. For the big picture, you have to go to space. Comparing satellite images of average sea ice in the 80s with the average from the last few years is stark. Globally, preliminary data suggests we are headed for a record melt this year. At the moment, the fjord is so warm that the atmosphere will not make it freeze over. There's just the amount of energy you would have to pull out from the fjord is so big that it will not freeze. This matters because sea ice reflects solar radiation. Without it, the sea will warm faster. The net effect, of course, is all that absorbed heat just helps to melt this part of the world quicker than anywhere else. They say here on Svalbard that it's heating up seven times faster than the rest of the world, seven times faster. Rising ocean temperatures have an impact on land too. Heading into the interior of these islands is a chance to see the story of this winter's snow and rain. For those studying snow, it's what they find beneath the surface that exemplifies a changing climate. Snow is a Polish media, peeling the air, space, freeze and form ice layers. And those one you can see them here. That is yeah, that is about one centimeter, one to two centimeter ice. So this, this is it, this snowpack. It tells me the story of the winter. Yeah, the snowpack, uh, a snow layer on the snowpack, a snow layer is uh, a consequence of a weather event, yeah. either a snowfall, yeah. precipitation, either a wind event which redistributes the snow, or a warm event which will melt the snow and can form ice. Reindeer struggle to scratch through ice to feed. Changes in this fragile ecosystem impact their population and the survival of other Arctic animals. A reduction in sea ice touches us all. Warming here leads to extreme weather across the planet. Rupert, it's a sobering report that you just made there. And um, the question is, what are the implications for all of this for, for us? Well, look, the polar regions, if you like, are, are almost the air conditioning units of the globe, aren't they? North and south, the cold points that, that help to regulate the temperature of the planet. Now, as they warm up, as the sea ice shrinks back, so the whole planet is touched by that. It's almost as though you could throw a stone into the fjord down here and the ripples that it creates find their way across the planet. We've been here for three or four days and it's been incredibly striking speaking to those people who, who study 
the climate change here, how quickly it is happening, how much they say, well, 30 years ago, it would have been completely different. We would have had sea ice here in winter. 30 years ago on the interior, they wouldn't have had those la layers of ice in the snow. It's happening so fast. And the impact is all those extreme weather events that we see uh, in the UK, or we see those in France and across the world, they're all impacted uh, by the melting sea ice. And think of this, they, think, they say that by 2040, in the summer, there may be no snow, no ice at all at the North Pole.